There are a few things sure in life. One is death, another is strife. And then there's the Islamic Jihad that's waged all over by some young clod. But we'll resist them with all we've got, which is truth and justice and whatnot. David Wood is here with us tonight, and this is once again This Week in Jihad, your favorite program of murder, mayhem, and bloodshed. Welcome, David. How are you? Hey, how you doing, Robert? David, I am very well, thank you. And thank God, I was supposed to be slogging through the bad weather and speaking this week in various locales across this fair and ignorant land. But instead, my flights were canceled, and so here we are. And I'm So here we with are with nothing to... Nothing to discuss. No jihad. Nothing to discuss, because I have not seen any jihad this week. No, there hasn't been any. Just... No, I go to the media. No, no, I, I, I go to all the news sites daily. There has not been any jihad. I can confirm. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say about that, except the news sites might have missed a couple things. That's why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we do what we do and why we do it so well. David, why don't we start where we were last week with the new phrase that the jihadis have decided to use in France instead of a lot of Wait, is this, that, is, this that, is this that on the Quran of Mecca crap? Yeah, man. Uh, there's more. <laughs> more this week? I'm going to have to... Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to have to add something to the Wheel of Terror. Remember the yes. Wheel of Terror where... Put, you, Take a couple of those and make them. If you take a couple of those and make them on the Quran of Mecca, then we're good. What I'm going to have to do. But uh, in the meantime, yes, that's what we have here in uh, France, of course. That's the only place so far that I have encountered this being said. But they're all apparently uh, saying it nowadays. It's the new thing. And so what we have here is actually, this is a first-hand account by a uh, parliamentary aide named uh, Kevin Loisy. That's L-O-I-S-Y for you uh, Philistines. Kevin Loisy. And Kevin Loisy says, I almost got my throat cut this morning. And he says, it was a Monday morning in the France of 2024. As I leave the doctor's office, I take shelter for a second in the Leon Mice Isle. I'm not sure. that I, I probably didn't translate that right. I was working from the Google. And the Google, you know, they've gotten much better, but sometimes you got to fix stuff here. Anyway, to put his scarf back on, and he says, then an N.A. type, that is North African, for those of you who are keeping score, North African type individual appears, 20 to 25 years old, dressed all in black with a white hood, and he screams, on the Quran, I F France, F all your dead, you white SOBs. Then he charged at him, held a knife to his throat. And uh, so that's one. Um, actually, well, it's just I mean, on the Quran. Yeah, but I, there's one thing we can all agree on, that uh, this is a small price to pay for diversity. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful what France has become. And uh, we can all be so glad that this guy, instead of having a boring commute, he ends up with this adventure while standing at the bus shelter. So this is a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Meanwhile, yeah, we... people people don't people don't make people don't make movies about like just boring regular days. Something exciting's got to happen. Of course, they're, they're not going to make movies about jihad because you know it doesn't fit the narrative. But uh, so, it, gosh, either way, this guy's not getting in a movie. All right, never mind. they'll make movies about jihad to change the people to, to Nazis. That's what they do, and so we'll get the movie about Kevin Loisy, and it'll be some guy screaming on Mein Kampf, I will cut your throat. But by the by the red hat of MAGA supporters everywhere, <laughs> yes. I attack thee. <laughs> On how to make a deal. What's isn't that the name of the book? What's that book called? Trump's book. 
I forgot. Uh, the Art of the Deal. The Art of the Deal. On the Art of the Deal, I will have your head. <laughs> All right. This, this area of Paris is MAGA country. All right. Uh, we also have in France a, uh, a French girl violently beaten by a gang of Muslims. And they say, by Allah, you will see. On the Quran of Mecca, I will if I hear that you have filed a complaint, and they don't finish. But in other words, there she's going to be in even worse trouble than she's already in getting beat up. On the Quran of Mecca, which we know to be a book of peace, if she reports the crime. Yeah, Robert, I, I can't, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, I. I really can't. I can't take all this uh, on the Quran uh, nonsense uh, anymore. So just, just going to be new rule. Here's the Quran of Mecca, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the Quran of Mecca. Anytime I hear this terrorist attack nonsense, beating, cre- beating people up, here's what I think about your Quran of Mecca. All right, that's what I think about your Quran of Mecca. Ugh, stop doing that. All right, can't take it anymore. <laughs> all right, I think we should. Uh, well, it's, good. We, it's good. You, it's good. You have a good sense of humor. It's good you have a good sense of humor about this because there are other people like, ah, I can't believe you just did this. Guys, they're, 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 they're bullying people, thugging out on people, threatening people, killing people, and you, you just can't stop being worried about their feelings. My goodness. Yeah. Well, the problem is then they use it as an excuse to kill more people, but uh, it, they would have some other excuse anyway. I was actually just thinking it would be nice to take that bit and isolate it out of this stream. And use that over and over again, you know, like, and we are proud of that, and all the rest of them. But anyway, <laughs> uh, ISIS is back, David. I'm sure you've been missing them. And they were yeah. put, they yeah, put up. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> of course, who wouldn't? They have been putting up, they put out posters. I don't know where they expect these posters to be actually posted but they are posters inciting jihad attacks on new york city this is part of their new <laughs> kill them wherever you find them campaign where did they come up with this catchy title for their new ad campaign i'll go with quran for 200 alex quran for 200 is correct so you get an extra bonus spin of the allahu akbar wheel uh and kill them wherever oh you hey find- the- yeah Oh yeah, yeah. You said you couldn't you couldn't figure out where they're going to hang these posters, but uh, I'm sure all the people who are going around uh, tearing down the posters of the Israeli uh, hostages, I, I bet they'll they'll be happy to put them up in place. Posters. Yeah, no problem there. Uh, <laughs> that's a good idea. They've got a whole army now of people who can put up their posters for them in place of the Israeli hostage <laughs> posters. All right, and kill them <laughs> wherever you find them. The first poster depicts an armed man three bullets, and a sketch of a building. Now, what I don't really understand is it says New York, New York, June 16th, 7 p.m., 1937. I'm not sure what happened. I should have checked that before. Anybody know what happened on June 16th, 1937? Is that that the Hindenburg disaster or something? I don't know. Uh, Anyway, it says, identify the target, trust in Allah, and execute the attack. The second poster depicts the New York City skyline in flames and an armed man brandishing a weapon, and the t- caption says, Go get them, O monotheist. I, I, I loved that. Go get them, O monotheist. David, you got to admire their, their, their ability to come up with a catchy phrase. Yeah, yeah, that is powerful. They call hey, for... hey, hey, Robert! Some... Yes, hey, someone's saying my volume. Someone's saying my volume's too low. Is that is that correct? Your volume looks fine to me. Is that are there other people saying there that uh, there's one person saying that that I saw briefly? Are there others? Yeah, but sometimes that's what I mean. So, some some people just say it to try and throw off the show. So I don't know. Uh... Yeah, it, it might be the case because according to the green line, you look fine. Okay, so... then we're good. Yeah, uh, the green line don't lie. All right, uh, Jews, Christians, uh, the 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 poster 
Go get them, O monotheist. Uh, it says Jews Christ- that Muslims should kill Jews, Christians, or their allies on the streets and roads of America, Europe, and the world. Lions of Islam, chase your prey, whether Jews, Christians, or their allies, on the streets and roads of America, Europe, and the world. Break into their homes, kill them, and steal their peace of mind by any means you can lay hands on. Understand that you are the arm of the Islamic State, hitting in the unbelievers' homelands and avenging the Muslims in Palestine, Iraq, Syria, and other Muslim countries. Solidify your plans and diversify your attacks. See, they're for diversity. Detonate explosives, burn them with grenades and fiery agents, shoot them with bullets, cut their throats with sharp knives, and run them over with vehicles. A sincere person will not lack the means to draw blood from the hearts of the Jews, the Christians, and their allies, and thus ease the suffering in the hearts of the unbe- of the believers. That business about easing the suffering in the hearts of the believers is from the Quran, chapter 9, verse 14, where it says, Fight them, and Allah will punish them by your hands, and ease the, soothe the bosoms of the, unbe- of the believers. Not the unbelievers, the believers. They're all, if you're all upset... Do some jihad, it's therapy. And we're, we're supposed to respect the ideology and the book that, that causes these guys to keep calling for this stuff, right? Yep. If you don't respect it, then you're an Islamophobe. You're a bigot, you're a racist. You know, you know Robert, this was, <laughs> this was just going to be, this is just going to be a response to this whole, uh, uh, on the Quran of Mecca stuff that they keep using now to attack people. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just on a, I'm just on a roll. I'm just on a roll yeah. with these ISIS guys now. These guys, I, I, I'm just sick of it. I'm, just, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there one day and I'm thinking, you know, you got all these Daniel Hakikachu guys and the uh, the Ali Dawa and the Muhammad Hijab and they and we just sit around. We just sit around as they're like calling uh, for. I mean, a Daniel Hakikachu saying that you could have sex with a four year old, four-year-old, even an eleven month old baby if you get parental permission ali dawas saying that you know he would tell his daughter at the age of nine that uh that she's ready for marriage hijab saying that if you go with the quran you conclude you can have sex with a five-year-old that's why you got to go outside the quran to get to the hadith and so on i mean uh, uh, all these guys you've got you've got uh sheikh uthman and and he's doing fake hate crimes against himself his fans don't care they love it Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, saying that you're dead, Brother Rashid is dead, you're all dead if these guys get their way. And we just sit there and have these conversations, and, and, and it's like we're, we're supposed to have this level of respect for this stuff. And I, I, I don't know, man. There you go, ISIS. There's I think you got a point. I think you got a very good point. Uh, anyway, here's more. Here's another one for you to respect, David. And this is another service that we provide at jihadwatch.org and also at This Week in Jihad, and that is that we cover stories that do not make the English media at all. I mean, now, you know, most of the stories we cover here don't make the major media. They're covered by the wire services, AP or Reuters or AFP or one of the other ones, but they're not out there in, in CNN or even Fox. They're, they're, you have to know where to find them. And after all these years, 20 years doing this, I do know where to find them. And so I bring them to you. But also, we have stories translated that have not appeared in English at all. And this is a French language story from TVA Nouvelle in Montreal. And it says, The Montreal man, accused of beating his daughter and threatening to kill her because she refused to be forcibly married to a cousin in Turkey, there's your clue as to what's going on here, will remain detained until the end of his trial. He's so dangerous that they're not letting him out during his trial. He said that this was essential to protect the victims of a Montreal father who beat and threatened his wife and one of his daughters in recent months. According to the Crown's evidence, the beatings on his daughter began last fall when the accused attacked his daughter who refused an arranged marriage. Then the accused wife's announced to him the accused's wife announced to him a couple weeks ago that she was seeking a divorce under the pretext that she had had enough of the violence she was experiencing. It was then that one of the he became angry to the extent that he said he was going to go kill his wife 
and daughter with a knife, cut them into small pieces, and as for the daughter in particular, rape her corpse. This is this guy in Montreal, clearly a Muslim from Turkey, involved in threats of honor violence over his daughter's refusal to accept an arranged marriage and his wife's quite understandable desire for a divorce. David, uh, this this is worthy of respect, is it not? Yeah, we got to respect that. Uh, but by the way, you you know you you mentioned uh, you mentioned a couple minutes ago you you, you pointed out that. Uh, you cover these stories and you have to go, you have to, you have to actually, you know, be a, like a detective to even track down these stories because, uh, because people don't share them and so on. Uh, but can you, it, it, it's interesting how the media can kind of create a problem by, based on what they focus on, right? They can, they can, they can pick anything in the world and just run stories about it all day and make it sound like it's this huge issue, even if it's, even if it's not. Um, so they can do that. On the other hand, they can take something that is a huge problem, that is a huge issue, and completely ignore it so that people never understand what, what, uh, what the problem is. But, uh, I mean, could you imagine how, pe how, can you imagine how concerned people might be about Islam and Jihad if it actually reported all this stuff that happens? Yeah, if this were major news all the time, then there would be massive upheaval. People would be saying, how can you be bringing mass numbers of Muslims into the country without making any effort to determine what they believe about these these hot button issues and what are the implications for the non-Muslims in the country particularly the Jews and the other targeted groups uh, it would be a, a, a huge change in the uh, culture the political culture of the entire West but it's not on the horizon and so now we, we can see the significance of groups like the Council on American Islamic Relations uh, labeling anyone who reports on anything having to do with this uh, racist, racist, Islamophobic, hate mongering bigots. Uh, if you actually do that, then the media is silent because they're cowards and then nothing ever gets reported and no one is aware of the problem and Islam can continue to uh, uh, spread. And of course, those of us who do speak about it, anytime we are mentioned in the mainstream, it's in a negative pejorative way. So that, uh, you know, you go to Wikipedia on Jihad Watch and it says it's a conspiracy, far right, of course, everything is, uh, that's not what they want. Uh, far right conspiracy theory site. And I think there's not nary a single conspiracy theory at Jihad Watch, except ones that imams sometimes put out that, like, for example, I've got a story somewhere in my list here of uh, this Turkish scholar saying that multiple sclerosis is punishment from Allah. That's that kind of conspiracy theory we report on, but we don't subscribe to any. Uh, unfortunately, we've got all too much evidence for what we're talking about. And, and by the way, I mean, if you were to actually sit down with any journalist that has the slightest bit of common sense and say, do you believe that people who leave Islam should be killed? Do you believe if someone criticizes Muhammad that that person should be murdered in, in public? Uh, do, do, you, do you believe these things? Do you believe that, um, that a man can just beat his wife? Into, so do you believe any of this? Do you believe that these things are good? Everyone's, gonna, everyone's going to agree with you on almost everything. The only thing they don't agree with you on is that you, you say it, right? So yeah. they believe, of, of course you're right about everything, Robert, but it's understood you keep your mouth shut or you're a racist. So you're not keeping your mouth shut, so you're a racist. Pretty simple. Yep, yep, it's all a conspiracy. Uh, but you know, David, speaking of reporters and the, the slant that people get in the news that a lot of people are waking up to, but still many people do not realize, uh, Interesting to note that this week it was exposed that CNN journalists, CNN, the most trusted name in news. According CNN, to them. According to them. <laughs> uh, we have a CNN producer, Mohammed Abdelbari, saying uh, that, saying F Israel, he hopes it gets crushed by the Palestinians. And uh, Richard Harlow, who is not named Mohammed, uh, a British cameraman for CNN, 
And he says, you know, what about all the Palestinian babies who've been murdered by Israelis? It's not just the Israelis being murdered, which, of course, is something that is not actually established by any verifiable evidence. And this is CNN. This is what they present on the news. Meanwhile, Al Jazeera, of course, which we already knew had terror ties, uh, the, they had a couple of journalists killed in Gaza, and this was widely reported. You know, Israel kills two journalists in an airstrike. It didn't say, but they were actually jihad terrorists. They were actual members, known members of uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad who were working for Al Jazeera on the side. Well, jihadis need journalism too, Robert. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. They got to know what uh, what to blow up next. Uh, I do actually have a picture of this clown. Here he is. This is Hussein Kaksen, and he is a scientist. I know it says it's Robert Spencer, but don't believe it. He is a scientist. Well, he's in, got a uh, he's got a he's got a tie on. He must be Spencer then. Uh, he's, uh, he's the scientist I mentioned, a professor, and he said multiple sclerosis is punishment from Allah. Many patients attributed in their co the cause of their disease to supernatural causes with the religious context in many cultures in the world. This guy's a professor at Nekmetin Erbakan University in Turkey. He has published many scholarly articles in, uh, the Islamic world saying this about multiple sclerosis. Now, this is not just ludicrous. It is also dangerous because this kind of thinking is what actually leads to jihad violence. Uh, what do you think, David? Is that a yeah, plausible and, statement? Yeah. And I mean, the real messed up thing is, is when you, when you say things like this, it's, uh, it's non falsifiable in the sense of like, how do you prove that it's wrong? And if so, if you get uh, if you get MS and someone says, ah, it's because of this, like, how do you how do you prove that it's wrong? And therefore, people can just start if anyone if any it, if pe people are stupid enough to listen to a moron like this, then they'll just oh, yep, that person got MS. You see, it's because of this this thing he did. Well, like, a apart from this lunatic saying it, what basis do you have for thinking that? None, but once it once it kind of spreads around, then yeah, that's what that's what sucks. You can notice, guys. The rule here is you can say anything. You you can you can make up anything you want and then spread it around, and this just I don't know seems common with these guys. See if the uh, if MS is punishment from Allah, and you don't want to get MS, then you don't want to get in a position where you deserve punishment from Allah. <clears throat> And so you have to do a lot of good deeds. And then that leads you right back onto the treadmill. What is the greatest deed, according to Muhammad? Jihad. So there you go. So in order to avoid MS, you might end up blowing yourself up in a crowd of infidels. But of course, then you can enjoy 72 virgins, 70 of whom are working off their sentence in hell. But that's another story. All right, uh, let's also in Canada, since we were in Canada just a minute ago. Ugh. This is Ahmed May. And you can see he's holding up the one finger salute. Uh, that is, uh, what is that, David? What is the one finger salute? Well, right when you said it, I was just thinking, gosh, the only thing I don't like about being a Christian is I can't give him a, a one finger salute in return. <laughs> Indeed. But uh, the one finger salute, of course, is for the oneness of Allah. And uh, he's showing that he is a good monotheist, just like the uh, ISIS folks saying, go get them, monotheists. Sick them. And uh, he worked at a, a restaurant in Montreal, La Belle et la Bouffe, Bouffe uh, which I think it means... The girl and the beef? I'm not really sure, but I mean, is that is that possible? La belle et la beef? Anyway, or is it the the pretty beef? I don't know. Anyway, um, he worked there, and this was a restaurant, a burger place, and they had fine French hamburgers. 
to go mm. with their French fries. And mm. uh, he, uh, ups- he, he, he pulled a knife and attacked several uh, of the patrons of the restaurant. And I heard reports, I did not find this in, even in the French language news reports, uh, but I heard reports that this was an argument about Hamas. Oh, Beauty and the Beef, thank you. So it's like Beauty yeah. and the Beast. Yeah, but with okay. beef instead. See how, Very... smart the, see how smart the French people are with their little uh, name restaurant names? Very clever, very clever. So... Hey. Uh, Hey, what, hey, one time I was at this, uh, this was this was in Queens, New York, and I was walking down the street, and there's a, uh, there's a, a pita place, there's a pita place, it's called Pita Pan. I'm like, ah, wow, Pita Pan, okay. And then right beside it was a hookah lounge that's called Hookah Lounge. <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, how do you not call that place Captain Hookah, right? You're right beside Pita Pan, how do you not have Captain Hookah? Like, how do you not think of that? That's so obvious. But uh, apparently the uh, Canadians are better with their names, because Beauty and the Beef is pretty good. The hookah lounge people—they hadn't—they haven't read the story, the beauty and the uh, the Peter Pan business. Anyway, Ahmed May, with his uh, one finger salute, he stabbed a couple people in the restaurant. Then he attacked the cops when they came, and so uh, they uh, have him. He's an ongoing story, but this is something that I think you're going to see a lot more of coming out of Canada. And so we are happy to bring you the stories out of France, I mean, out of Canada, that are not only not reported in America, but not even reported in Canada, for the most part. Uh, we also well, have, yes? Well, no, I was just going to say, I mean, there's not a whole lot to worry about, because uh, they've got Justin Trudeau on the job up there, so. Yes. What, what could go wrong? And they've got the Imam Yunus Kathrada, who will preach peace and love. And they've also got the Imam Ayman Tahir who uh, he said that uh, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, you remember Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, David, the yeah, founder they're... of Hamas? No. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah, he was in a wheelchair. Uh, he was sort of the uh, the iron side of, uh, of jihad, but that's dating myself to even say iron side. He was a detective yeah. in a wheelchair. No, after, after all these years, all these jihadis look alike to me. Well, this guy, he had a long white beard. You know, that, that, that just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, it was his wheelchair. Anyway, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin was killed in an airstrike and, uh, this guy is talking about what a hero he was. And he's saying, uh, he, he, he said that, uh, he, somebody asked him once, do you believe that Israel will be finished? And Sheikh Ahmed Yassin said, yes, when do you think it will be finished? And he says, 2027. And then this, guy, uh, this Imam Ayman Tahir says, and I said to myself, how calm, how confident this man is. And then he goes on, says, uh, he was a handicapped man in a wheelchair. If someone tipped him over, he would have fallen off the chair and died. But Allah wants to take from among you martyrs four rockets. I'm not sure how many millions each rocket cost to give him an honorable martyrdom. The point I'm trying to make here, when he was in jail and after that, when he was living in very difficult times, he never had doubt that Allah is going to give victory to his religion. We should not either, because he has inspired millions. I know I'm getting myself in trouble now for speaking on social media. And I I saw that and I thought, well, yeah, you know, unfortunately not. The Canadians aren't going to do a thing to you, buddy. You got nothing to worry about. No, they'll, they'll make him the next prime minister. Uh, yeah, so these timelines, I'm, I'm, I actually like it when they get little little time frames because AP's been, AP's been playing this clip of these Hamas guys saying in 2018 that Israel would be gone by 2022. Uh, so we're here we are in 2024, and so they obviously don't know what they're talking about. But this goes back to just what I was saying. See, if I see some old guy with a white beard, in a wheelchair, I'd be like, oh, you know, got to respect these, got to respect these old guys. But he's a jihadi. I would slash the tires on his now. Anyway, I'd slash the tires on his wheelchair. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, listen here, you old fart. <laughs> You're not getting any respect from me. <laughs> 
slaps the tires on your wheelchair, push you down a hill. What? Well, speaking of uh, uh, disrespect to the disabled, we had a bunch of pro Hamas protesters show up at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. And I, I had to, uh, that kind of took me back, David, because <laughs> back in 2019 when I died, I, when, I, when I came to uh, uh, about 10 days later, they were asking me, you know, they didn't know how much I had, uh, 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 had brain damage, which was not at all, but they didn't know that then. And so they were asking me questions like, where are you? And I kept saying Sloan Kettering. And I had no idea why I thought I was in Sloan Kettering. I was not. I was in a completely different hospital. But uh, I always have had a soft spot for Sloan Kettering ever since. But the jihadis do not share, share that view, David. They, uh, they say that they showed up at Memorial Sloan Kettering, a hospital in New York City for cancer patients. Little children with cancer came to the windows to see, the, uh, see what the commotion was all about. And they're actually captured on the video saying, make sure they hear you. They're in the windows and they're shouting shame on you to these little kids with cancer because they're not supporting the jihad against Israel. Mm -hmm. Which probably and, uh, they weren't thinking about very much in Sloan Kettering, tell you the truth. Yeah, you know, those kids are probably more worried about things like, you know, cancer. Yeah. Incredible. I, I, it, it is, I mean, the, the only, the only, the only positive side. So the, the, the big issue that's kind of going on in the world is you have what's called the avalanche of apostasy. That's not, we didn't come up with that. They came up with that name, the tsunami of apostasy, the avalanche of apostasy. They're the ones posting, uh, posting videos and speaking at conferences in an absolute panic state uh, that Islam is crumbling from within. Um, I mean, you've seen the statistics mm -hmm. 40%, 40% of Iranians still consider themselves Muslims. Only 40%, um, and, down from yeah. an official 99, folks. Yeah. Uh, and so you have a, an Islamic regime in power, and yet most of the population doesn't even believe it anymore. Anyway, Islam is crumbling in Muslim countries. It's, it's understood that uh, this, none of this is, this isn't coming, this isn't coming from me. According to them, there are millions, millions of closeted atheists in Muslim countries that still live as Muslims, even though they don't believe, even though they don't believe uh, any of this stuff. And so Muslims understand this and they're, they're doing the math in their head. Wait, if, 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 if the rate of apostasy went from close to zero, the rate of apostasy among young people went from close to zero to 24, in a little over a decade, what's going to happen in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years? What, what, if it accelerated that fast, what's, what's going to happen in the next 10 or 20 years? So they're in a panic mode, and it's, what are we going to do? And they don't have anything really going for them. They don't have some great, some great new argument that they're going to use. And we've seen people like Ali Dawa and, and so on put it out sort of loosely based on Andrew Tate saying, oh, I'm a Muslim now because Islam will just kill everybody, and Islam is going to be the last, the last ideology standing. And Ali Dawa runs with this and he says, you know, basically, we don't need the scientific anymore. That was all that was all our arguments were basically bogus. Um, people are going to convert based on our intolerance. They're sick to death of all the, of tolerance going overboard. So we're going to show everyone through our intolerance that we're the ones who are who are who are not going to who are not going to stand for, for anything anymore. Uh, that, that, that's that's uh, that's coming against us. We're just going to be we're going to go into a violent rage over everything. And so this is a, this is a big power play. Uh, for them, and so the, well, on the one hand, what's good is they're kind of they're kind of showing their hand. They're they're showing everyone their true colors. Um, but at the same time, is if this doesn't work, in other words, if Israel just says, no, "I don't I don't care what you I don't we don't care what some idiots are doing in New York. We don't care what some idiots are doing at a college protest. We're still going to crush Hamas." If the, if they just crush Hamas, and you know people screaming around the world realize that didn't work at all, um, what do they? I mean. It, at, at the end of all this, at the end of all this, so whenever this, whenever this uh, sort of uh, uh, comes to a comes to a close, uh, they're going to be left with, wow, we just enraged half the world. We enraged half the world with all these this stupid stuff like uh, bothering can little kids with with cancer and so on, and people are going to have an, be awfully suspicious of uh, Muhammad's religion. Well, you know, uh, that would be very interesting outcome. 
But of course, there are many people, we are at a tipping point indeed, David, and there are many people who are doing their best to preserve the existing order. And look at this clown out of Britain. This is the heading of a column in The Guardian, far left paper, and of course we've remarked many times about the left Islamic alliance. And so this guy, Peter Hain, who was a former minister to the Middle East for the UK government, and you can see what he says here, Israel and its allies must face facts. Peace talks are the only way forward, and they will have to include Hamas. Wrong. It's incredible to me. Why it's, is it's, it wrong, David? Explain it to the folks at home. Uh, peace talks do not need to include Hamas. That's not true. I mean, it could. Israel could just decide, you know what? Let's really negotiate with, uh, with Hamas and uh, get them in some peace talks right now. Uh, I mean, so it's not it's not outside the realm of uh, possibility, but he's saying the these peace talks have to include Hamas. No, they don't. Israel could say we are going to keep going until Hamas is completely crushed. Then we'll work on some peace talks, and that yeah. would be a yeah. That, that that's what I would advocate: crush it's, Hamas, then then have peace talks. It would be like saying in 1942, uh, peace talks are the only way forward, and they will have to include the Nazis. Wrong. You could crush the Nazis, then have peace talks. Exactly. Let's do that again. Uh, meanwhile, Israel is also facing pressure from the UN, and it should be noted that the UN uh, refugee, I forget what this stands for, UNRWA, which is the refugee uh, agency of the UN for the Palestinians. The UN has two refugee agencies. One is for every refugee in the world except the Palestinians. And the other is for the Palestinians, because the Palestinians are so special. And so they have their own refugee agency, but their refugee agency is all mixed up with the jihadis. And this is a uh, classroom in Gaza. And there's the UNRWA teacher there with her full niqab. And it has been found many times that the textbooks are preaching and the teachers are teaching jihad against Israel. And as a matter of fact, a bunch of UNRWA <clears throat> teachers went on to Telegram after, after October 7th. And one of them was very happy, saying, They breastfed jihad with their mother's milk. May Allah grant them victory. Another one says, Wait, sons of Judaism. The uh, Allah will admit those the attackers to paradise without judgment, and so on. And these are UN paid teachers, paid with our tax money, to teach the little kids among the Palestinians. Well, what I'm confused about is how can the UN claim to be uh, supporting peace when they send ninjas to teach kids? No. <laughs> it's like, oh. Oh, here's this assassination art of peace. <laughs> well, there is a lot of similarity there, isn't there? I actually, I actually first heard that. <laughs> I was on your website. This was like probably, uh, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago or something like that. But I was on Jihad Watch and there was a picture of a woman in a, in a, uh, in a uh, in a full niqab there and uh my son who was like five or six or something like this he walked by and he goes hey daddy what are you doing looking at the ninja and i just <laughs> i started i started cracking up laughing <laughs> yep and it was funny then 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 i told that story to Beal, and he told me about his his little cousin he was uh, he was walking down the street with his cousin one time and a woman walked by in a burka and like the kid looked up and he goes ninja yeah uh-oh i'm glad her uh her keeper wasn't around mm-hmm all right, uh, let's go to New York City, the city we know and love. This is Trevor Bickford. And you can tell from Trevor. <laughs> yeah, Trevor. I know. Trevor. <laughs> Trevor Bickford. That has got to be the, the whitest name I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, Trevor's also, you can tell from his little hat that he's a convert to Islam. And he is not quite clear on the concept because he's still got his dog. Yep. Going to have to kill him, Trevor. Yep. But Trevor's going to have to wait to do that because he has just pleaded guilty 
Uh, he's from Maine, and he traveled on New Year's Eve 2022. That is December 31st, 2022. He traveled to New York City, went to Times Square, pulled a machete out of his bag, and attacked several police officers. Gave them some serious injuries. So, uh, Trevor Bickford <laughs> from Maine. Well, the Maine. whitest the the whitest person since Muhammad uh, decided to uh, go attack police officers in Times Square. Yeah, after you know, after he converting actually, to Islam. Uh, he actually screamed a certain phrase as he was attacking them. By the Quran of Mecca! <laughs> no, that's, the, that's, that's only in France so far. He, he stuck with the tried and true Allahu Akbar. By, I swear by my dog that I'm supposed to kill, I will slaughter in the middle of the ball. <laughs> anyway, he had a note in his backpack when he was arrested and he wrote to his family saying, please repent to Allah and accept Islam. Uh, to his mom, he wrote, I fear greatly that you will not repent to Allah and therefore I hold hope in my heart that a piece of you believes so that you may be taken out to the hellfire. I'm not sure if he maybe meant to say out of the hellfire, but that's what he wrote. To his brother, said, yeah. I was going to say, you said he had a note in his backpack, and I was thinking, like, a note from his mom, like, Oh, Trevor, Trevor, dear, you've fallen behind on your violin lessons. If you don't, if you don't do your violin lesson tonight, there'll be no Fig Newtons for you. Oh, oh no, dear. Lucy, no, no, please don't publish, please don't punish your, your beloved Trevor. What is this? What are these jihadis, man? It's kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel with jihad nowadays. <laughs> Trevor, they're not—they're not giving us their best. No, uh, not getting the best. He, uh, all right. Anyway, he said to his brother, uh, "Please repent to Allah and accept Islam. I fear for you." And his other brother joined the Marines. So he writes to his Marine brother, "You have joined the ranks of my enemies, and for that I can give you no kind words. Return to Allah." Anyway, then he went and tried to kill a couple of cops. But now he says, in court, when he pled guilty, he said, oh, by the way, I'm schizophrenic. And so that's a clearly mm. an attempt. You know, that's trying to uh, get into the European thing of saying that all the jihadis are mentally ill. And mm -hmm. meanwhile, of course, the press was all saying, we're trying to figure out this guy's motive, and it's a total mystery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it always is. It always is. And speaking and, of... And as, you've, as, you, as you've pointed out before, but as we can point out a thousand times over and over again, it is very, very odd that all of these people who convert to Islam and have, uh, have mental disabilities and so on, and they go instantly, instantly crazy and so on, they all have some sort of delusion that their new religion is telling them to do something and they all have the exact same delusion about what it's what they're supposed to do it's not it's never oh i've converted to this new religion and the voices the voices are telling me to go help the homeless it's never that it's ah oh, the voices are telling me slaughter everyone in the name of allah it's like wow that voice is lining up pretty well with what uh, what muhammad and the quran say what an amazing coincidence mm-hmm Speaking of the clueless, the terminally clueless, this is Jared Polis. Termin ter terminally stupid. Yes. This is Jared Polis, the governor of Colorado. You can tell he's governor of Colorado because that's the Colorado state flag he's got wearing for a tie. And uh, the Colorado state flag is pretty poor, i got to say. It's just a big C. Uh, but anyway, um, he is governor of Colorado. And he recently delivered his state of the state message. Now, it's, it's interesting to note that uh, recently synagogues have been threatened, that have been bomb threats in synagogues all over Colorado. And uh, in response, in his state of the state message, 
Jared Polis said that he was giving money for protection to, what do you think, David? Uh, mosques, care, something like that. It's got to got to be something yep. like that, right? Because 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 Islamic... for for some reason, we saw it right after the October seventh attacks, where everyone was like, "Ah, look what just happened! We really need to do something about Islamophobia right now." Yep, well, that's what he's doing. He's giving money to the Islamic Center of Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, he didn't say anything about giving any money to any of the synagogues, even though the synagogues had actually received real bomb threats. Meanwhile, and by the way, notice that ties no that ties into uh, that ties into um, that story of uh, our our good friend Trevor Trevor the Shredder. They're calling him in uh, <laughs> Trevor the Shredder. Um, yes. But you got Trevor the Shredder, and the the reason and. We've talked about this before, but over in Europe, the reason they always buy this, oh, this guy went out and slaughtered a bunch of people in the name of Allah. He must be crazy is because the myth that was spread uh, by journalists and politicians and groups like CARE for all these years that Islam is so incredibly peaceful. It's the religion of peace. Well, how, well, why do people become jihadis then as well? I mean, they must actually be crazy because only a crazy person could read if anyone kills a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind and think that you're supposed to go out and, and kill people and therefore you must be insane. And so if you're if you're a Trevor or if you're a jihadi and we're looking for motive, oh, this guy obviously has to be crazy because there's no way any sane person would conclude that Islam calls for uh, calls for violence. But mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Um, if you're absorbing this idea, no, Muslims protect Jews, Muslims love Jews, Muslims, it's a religion of peace. Hey, all these synagogues are getting, me, uh, are getting threatened. Well, then, we really need to support Islam because that will, that, will that will protect Jews. So, mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know where these people learn to think if they ever did. Okay, uh, in the same vein, another stupid governor. Uh, this is Al-Haji... Jallo, and he that's is, not a governor no he's not the governor the governor is in the story though so bear with me oh, okay we have al haji Jallo of the uh medina community center in madison wisconsin and uh clearly al haji Jallo is a pillar of the community because we also have him here there he is he's not a tall fellow uh, there he is. Can you see the pointer when I point, or can you only see the picture? No, I actually don't know that. I just see, I just see the picture. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I think there's, I think there's, I think there's somewhere in the settings for future reference. I think there's somewhere in the settings where you can uh, click on like show your pointer or something like that. But yeah, otherwise, okay, I'll don't. research that. But in the meantime, j there's yellow flowers on the table, and immediately to the right, from our perspective is Al-Haji Jallo wearing a white uh, robe and a kefiya, And then to his right is a fellow with white hair and glasses, and that's Tony Evers, or Evers, I don't know which one, the uh, governor of Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. this is Wisconsin's Eid celebration from last May. And Jallo was there with, as you can see, a number of other Muslim leaders. And uh, Tony well, Evers there, was there, Robert. Ro Robert, there's always room for Jallo. Yes. <laughs> Remember back in the '70s when they would serve it with lettuce. But anyway, uh, yeah, that might have been before your time. Anyway, yeah, uh, it was too, Robert. Yikes! <laughs> yeah, Al Haji Jallo. Uh, it's just come to light. The Middle East Media Research Institute indispensable site memory.org they published uh, excerpts just last week of uh, a sermon that al haji jallo preached on october 13th six days after the october 7th massacres and he said uh we neglected the principle of support which is jihad for the sake of allah the only way that we can stop the oppression is to face the enemy the way they faced us they face us with aggression, we should retaliate with aggression. Allah said in the Quran, fight in the path of Allah, those who fight against you. They will fight, they will defend their religion, they will defend their land, not with their tongues, 
but with their blood. And he goes on and on in this vein, says, The only thing by Allah that can bring glory to this Islamic nation is jihad, which is mentioned in the Quran and the Hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad. The only thing that can bring honor and glory to this nation is jihad. Okay, then he goes on. You ready for this, David? You strapped in? O oh, Jews, you unjust, <laughs> criminal, corrupt oppressors, stop. You will all most definitely be killed. The Jews, the aggressors, the evil, you describe them, what they do. By Allah, all of them will be killed by Muslims. They will all be executed by Muslims. They will all be killed. This is a divine promise that will inevitably be fulfilled. This is a promise from Allah, and it is going to happen. They will all be killed. They will all be killed. And on that day, the believers will rejoice in Allah's victory. That's Al-Haji Jallo. Interestingly enough, if you search for him, you will find some earlier articles where he is quoted talking about how terrorism and violence have nothing to do with Islam. And uh, anyway, that's the next governor, apparently. Yeah, yeah, because Tony Evers, he's, you can tell he's getting old. He's not going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. Maybe Ahaji Jallo will be governor of Wisconsin, or maybe he will be Secretary of Education, because this is, let me find him. Um, I know I've got him here, because he's got a stupid look on his face. There he is, Miguel Cardona. Miguel Cardona is the Secretary of Education right now in the Biden administration. And he is uh, going around. He's speaking at Dartmouth College this week about the dangers of, what do you think, David? Islamophobia. You are correct, sir. Islamophobia. <laughs> Good guess, huh? Yeah, that's it. He's going to tell them that they've got to not be Islamophobic, which I'm sure there's a whole rash of Islamophobia at Dartmouth. But Also, the University of Cincinnati has started a task force to uh, combat campus Islamophobia. That's good. Yes. <clears throat> Kids are running around all over these college campuses screaming, uh, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. So if there's anything we need to be concerned about, it's Islamophobia. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, you know, in France, I missed a couple stories, David, because I had the uh, on the Quran of Mecca stories together. I didn't have them with this. The old style, old school French jihad where uh, we have, for example, in uh, uh, the Rue de Faubourg Saint-Jacques, uh, a guy is standing there with broken bottles in his hands, and he says, Allahu Akbar, I'm going to kill a cop. And the, uh, the cops took out their weapons, although they did not use them. Whoa! Ooh, they took out their weapons? That's Islamophobic. They did. That was so Islamophobic. Don't they, don't they realize you're supposed to, like, willingly offer yourself up on the altar to be killed by these guys to show how yeah. tolerant you are? What, what's wrong with that? I mean, Britain throat. understands you have to... Yeah, it, Britain understands you have to hand over thousands of uh, 11 and 12-year-olds to be gang-raped by these guys to show how tolerant you are. Well, I mean, what's a few police officers? Indeed. There's plenty more. After all, they can fill the ranks with Muslim police officers. Uh, in any case, mm -hmm. we also had and and that would you actually need something like that, Robert? Because uh, you know that verse: uh, "Don't take the Jews and the Christians uh, as friends; they are friends of one another." And this can be translated as protectors, or allies, or anything like that. Um, but you have uh, you, you know it, that includes protectors. Don't take the Jew, the Jews and the Christians as protectors. If you do, you're one of them. Uh, so to to really show how tolerant you are, you need nothing but Muslim officers, Muslim uh, judges, anyone who's in a position of, uh, of, of authority over other people has to be Muslim. Uh, otherwise, it's going against their religion and therefore, uh, you know, questioning how tolerant this, this France place really is. Well, yeah, but I think it's common. You're going to have all Muslim police officers. It's uh, it's coming pretty, pretty, pretty quick. Meanwhile, in the in the train station in Lyon, we have a uh, an Algerian who migrated to France, and he is shouting, Allahu Akbar, 
and he's brandishing a grenade. Turned out to be a dummy, a fake grenade. He was just trying to strike terror in the enemies of Allah. That is uh, a chapter 8, verse 60 of the Quran. You know, it's weird. You you said uh, you said you had this uh, you know you had this immigrant there, and uh, he's in France now, and he's shouting a lot, Akbar, and you know, really seemed like it was going to be Allahu Akbar. Thank you for for blessing me to be in this country that I wanted to come through, come to to get away from the last Sharia compliant hellhole that I couldn't stand living in. Uh, thank you, thank you know, praise Allah, praise Allah. This is so great. Uh, but no, mm -hmm. fake grenade. Wow, wild, weird stuff. Yeah, he could have bought a beret and a baguette and a bicycle and fit right in. A striped shirt. He could have been French. Castrated. No. Could have been castr <laughs> castrated. <laughs> Surrendered to the Germans. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. um, we have uh, also in France, in Avignon, where the popes of the 14th, 14th century, 14th century lived. And uh, now it's fallen on hard times we had this guy and he uh is shouting allahu akbar and it turns out that he was a patient he was suffering from psychiatric problems uh and even though he had uh, of course they we don't know if the psychiatric problems are just jihad because it goes on to say he'd been poisoning the lives of his neighbors for many months so even though he's a psychiatric patient they they've apparently let him out and he's terrorizing his neighbors, and they don't care. So last week he starts screaming, Allahu Akbar, sets fire to his own apartment, uh, which, uh, of course, endangered all the people around there. No, I mean, better his apartment than mine. Indeed, indeed. But if ISIS gets its way, remember, they said that they were going to... Uh, what did they say? They're going to come into the households of the unbelievers? Something like that. I read it before. Um, start hitting in the... Oh, yeah. Break into their homes. Kill them and steal their peace of mind. You sound skeptical, David. I don't know. Hey, David, we yeah. had an unusual thing happen, and that was a jihad incident in Japan. It was in Fuji Shitagumi, Hanyu City. Fuji Shitagumi at the Saitama Prefectural Police Investigative Division 1 and Hanyu Police Station. They arrested a 25 year old man from Fuji Shitagumi, Hanyu City, and he was from Pakistan. And I, you know, I don't think they have very many Pakistanis working in Japan. And what happened was he uh, was at a karaoke bar. And uh, no, he was not at the bar. She went to the bar. Then she was riding her bicycle home. He came up to her in the guise of asking directions. And this is according to the Japanese report. He performed obscene acts, such as touching her body. An unknown foreigner called out to her and groped her body. But then uh, when he was arrested, this Pakistani, he said, I didn't do it. I kind Wasn't of think he did. I think he did. Yeah. I think this is more of this yeah. uh, war. Yeah, that sounds business. like that, dude. That sound that sounds like one of those Pakistani dudes, but uh, uh, we have to say I have to say uh, yeah I don't think jihad's going to be terribly successful in Japan. I mean these are people who are used to like fighting off Godzilla, and you know you think a jihad he's going to come in there and start growing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well we'll see. They might want to you know get with the times and all that. They've been doing that since World War Two. Uh, anyway, um, one last in Germany, we have a. Uh, migrant i believe he was a migrant i'm not sure actually but in any case oh yeah a somali and he came up to an 11 year old girl on a train uh this uh, this girl was put on the train to visit her aunt 
and so she's uh, riding on the train to Dorfen. Uh, auf Dorfen, yeah? And in Dorfen, uh, the man comes, I mean, on the train to Dorfen, this 29-year-old Somali comes, sits next to her, and starts stroking her bare knee. When she moved away from him, he followed her. After a while, he said to her, in his culture, a real man doesn't ask a woman for long, but instead grabs hold of her. He said he came to Germany a few years back to have a better life. And that's and what's what's creepy is that's true, right? He did. He wants a he wants a he wants a place where he can go and uh, and molest a bunch of little girls. Yeah, probably not as and, easy and, and in that's Somalia. A, a better life for me. Because in Somalia yeah, and, they're but all I mean, covered. But I, I mean, but I mean, think about it. I mean, if this guy's showing up and he wants to uh, he wants to enter Germany and they're like, hey, what do you want? And he's like, I want a better life. And they're like, oh, see, he just wants a better life. He just wants to work hard and and be a be you know contribute to society. He wants a better life. Whereas his, it, it's, uh, you got all these girls here. I, uh, I want the little girls. Pretty creepy. Yep. Uh, so. Uh... But I mean, I mean, I but I, but I mean, I mean, notice any one of these any one of these guys coming from Pakistan or anywhere else who wants to come to the UK or Germany or France or anywhere else, they're all going to be saying, I, I want a better life. Hey, I want a better life. And, and, and morons are interpreting that. Oh, you must mean what we mean when we say we want a better life. You must mean that when no, they do want better lives. They do want better lives. But what they mean by a better life is very, very different from anything you're, you're thinking. And uh, it pretty much goes, exactly opposite of what you think they mean by better life that's always been the case you know all the way back to george w bush way back after 9 11 saying we just want to fight to uh help moms and dad ordinary moms and dads in iraq mm -hmm. and uh i was thinking mm -hmm. when i saw him say that he should have said moms and moms and moms and moms and dads but he was thinking mm -hmm. that they and he said you know they want justice they want freedom just like we do. And I thought, well, maybe they do, George, but they just don't think of it the way you do. They have totally different mm -hmm. definitions of it based on the Sharia. Sharia. Anyway, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot more Jihad. You want to find it? It's at jihadwatch.org with all the sources, all your things you need. And meanwhile, if there is any more Jihad, We'll be back here next week. In the meantime, stay safe, keep your powder dry, pray, hope, and don't worry.